Hey y'all, this is Sherry with Freedom in a Can. Today we are installing the new Renogy 50 amp DC to DC charger with MPPT into our truck and vintage campers off-grid power setup. This amazingly small powerhouse is dual input, so it will take an engine charge and a solar power charge to recharge the off-grid solar batteries that run our lives. Let's take a look at the final installation to see what we're getting into today. We'll be connecting the starting battery cable to the 50 amp charger. The output goes to the battery through a 100 amp ANL fuse. This output will connect to a battery selector switch so we can choose to charge either a 50 amp lithium iron phosphate battery that runs our 12 volt ice cove fridge or our trailer's 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery bank that connects through this Anderson connector. Now this new charger is going to replace the 30 amp dual input DC to DC charger that we installed three years ago. And you can take a look at that installation video right here. Now in that video, we go into a little bit more detail about how we pulled the wires along the chassis and connected everything in the back of our truck. Now we want to clarify that there's nothing wrong with our 30 amp version, except that it cannot handle the voltage specifications of our new 400 watt portable solar suitcase. And since we roll full time in our tiny adventure rig, we don't have a lot of room for extra portable panels. Now the main differences between the older 30 amp and this new 50 amp are the smaller size. Again, check this out. It is so small, but a lot more powerful. It's going to provide us 20 amps more of charging power while driving. And instead of being limited by half dedicated to solar and the other half dedicated to engine power, this device allows up to 50 amps together wherever that energy is coming from. It's also got a more simple installation. So rather than the dedicated terminals that you see here on the 30 amp, the 50 amp connects through these wires that are here. And this gives you greater flexibility when connecting all of your components together. Also, the 50 amp model does not require a special ignition signal wire of the older models, which just simplifies the whole process. The 50 amp charger is compatible with 12 volt or 24 volt batteries, and it's waterproof up to one meter but we're not gonna test that today. Finally, the 50 amp charger comes with built-in Bluetooth, so we'll be removing this hardwired RMS monitor. We'll be able to view the charging specs via the DC Home app on our smartphone or our Renogy One core monitor. Additionally, we'll be installing the Renogy Battery Shunt 300 directly to the battery so it too can connect wirelessly. Now the 50 amp charger will not only recharge the battery that we use to run our 12 volt ice co fridge freezer, which lives in the back of our truck, but with the flip of a switch, we can change this to charging the 200 amp hours of LifePo batteries that we have in our camper. This allows us to take advantage of this charging source during rainy or cloudy weather, or during the late fall, winter, or early spring, when our cooler isn't working very hard and the solar gain can be limited due to low sun angle or shorter days. Just in case all of this makes your head spin, here's a quick look at our current wiring diagram that shows you how everything works together in our off-grid setup. You can see that we have a truck side and a camper side. While we usually get enough power from the flexible panels on our roof, sometimes we need that extra power from our 400 watt solar suitcase. In the summer, we often park in the shade to keep the camper cool and put the panel out in the sun to keep those amps rolling in. On the truck side, we can use either the engine power or solar to keep our refrigerator running. But as I've mentioned earlier, the 400 watt panel produces too much voltage for the 30 amp charger, so it's time for an upgrade. Let's get started with the installation. We're gonna walk you through the basic tools that you need for this project. You probably already have these tools or can borrow from a friend. Most people think with a solar installation that you need fancy things, but you don't. Let's walk you through it. You need a basic socket set, Phillips head flathead screwdriver, a blade of some sort, a cordless drill, wire cutters, wire crimpers. And for this project, we needed some heavy duty wire crimpers because we were working with six AWG wire. Now the gauge of the wire depends on your project. Based on the amperage and the length of the wire, it needs to travel. Some electrical tape, some terminal ends, 
and we'll be using an Anderson connector to connect everything between the truck and the camper. And that's it. As always, we'll start by cutting off any power to the components we'll be rewiring. Both the input switch in the engine compartment and the ANL fuse in the back near the 50 amp hour battery. Before removing the 30 amp DC to DC charger, we'll label all the wires that we'll be reusing on the 50 amp charger. Next, we'll install a negative bus bar to make all the common negative connections. The first is the negative cable that runs all the way back to the starting battery. The second is the negative cable that runs from the battery shunt 300. The third will be the negative solar cable. Next, we'll connect the battery shunt from the B- terminal to the 50 amp hour negative battery terminal. Then we'll connect the P- terminal to the negative bus bar. The battery shunt gets its power from the small red wire, which will connect to the 50 amp hour positive battery terminal. And here we can see that the shunt has powered on. Since this is a very cramped space in the back of the truck, we're gonna crimp on a few terminals before climbing back in. We'll be putting ring terminals on the black and brown wires on the 50 amp charger. Now it's time to mount the DC to DC charger, keeping enough space around the unit for air movement. Connect the negative black wire to the negative bus bar. Now connect the yellow wire to the solar input wire and we'll be using a butt crimp connector. Here, we also have an inline fuse of 15 amps to protect against any surge. The 400 watt portable panel has an operating current of only 10 amps. Now our starting battery cable and the unit's input wire are different gauges. So we'll be using this inline splice connector to bring these two wires together. Now there's lots of ways to do this, but we really like this method as it will keep things from rattling apart on bumpy roads. And just to do a quick test, we're going to temporarily connect this to the 50 amp hour battery through the positive terminal to make sure everything is working before we bring the battery selector switch into the equation. We have to admit that connecting to the DC Home app can be frustrating. It often takes many attempts to find the Bluetooth components at first. So be patient and simply give it some time. You haven't done anything wrong. It's the app doing its thing behind the scenes. When they do connect and pair, they will automatically come up each time you open the app from now on. Okay, let's get back to wiring up the battery selector switch. We're going to replace the older, smaller gauge wires we had along this run. First, we'll connect the six gauge wire to the Anderson connector from the trailer side to the truck. When inserting the Anderson terminals, be sure you hear the click so that you know that they are connected. Be sure to slide the waterproof housing on before completing the connection. Next, we'll pull the six gauge wire into the back of the truck and secure it to the wall of the bed liner. Connect the positive wire to the battery selector switch in position number two and secure. Connect the negative wire to the bus bar. Now 
Then we'll repeat the Anderson connection from the truck side to the trailer. On this one, we'll be using a weatherproof housing that will mount to the bumper. It makes a really convenient way to quickly connect and disconnect. Next, we'll pull the six gauge wire into the solar cabinet inside our trailer to make the final connection to our negative and positive bus bars, which are connected to our 200 amp hour battery bank. Here's a review of what we've done. The starting battery is connected to the 50 amp charger via the red wire. The charger output is through the brown wire, which goes through the 100 amp fuse and then to the battery selector switch. Let's turn that switch to the 50 amp hour battery that runs our fridge and give things a quick test. First, we'll plug in our 400 watt portable solar panel to the charger and see how that is working by itself. The charger detects the solar input and is charging the 50 amp hour battery at just over 8 amps. When we turn the engine on, the charger pumps that up to 25 amps. Now let's switch it over to our house battery bank. And now we're charging at nearly 32 amps. This is some of the fastest charging we've ever seen on our small system. So this is just an initial test. We'll be testing the charging amps with this new 50 amp DC to DC charger over the next few weeks in various situations. We'll be upgrading the 50 amp hour battery to a brand new Renogy 100 amp hour, as well as adding a new Renogy One core monitor in just a few weeks as well. We can't say enough about this monitor. Having one in the back here means we don't have to pull out that phone and check every time we wanna check the battery. So check back with us and we'll have a more thorough review of how this 50 amp DC to DC charger is operating within our system. Thanks so much for watching y'all and we'll see you on the road.